Hey everyone, Richard from Digital Foundry here, and this is Dynasty Warriors 9, Dynasty Warriors 9 for our US brethren. So this is an interesting one, not a game we were planning to cover, but we'd heard some pretty bad reports about performance, and those reports have indeed turned out to be true. Now, joining me to talk about this game and all its various different permutations across the enhanced consoles, the base consoles, David Beardson. Hey Rich. Okay, so let's cut to the chase here because we kind of have reached the conclusion that on the enhanced consoles, this is probably the worst performing game that we've seen to date. Yep, that's right. And if you're coming in expecting, you know, solid frame rates, 30 FPS, you're not going to be getting it. This is actually probably the, the worst performing Dynasty Warriors game that I've seen. It's a lot poorer than PlayStation 2 or even some of the earlier PlayStation 3 installments. Yeah, I mean, if we go back to the PS2 era, this game actually targeted 60 frames per second. So, yeah, what we're seeing here obviously isn't that. So, let's talk about the different permutations we're doing here. I think we're going to start with the most optimal solution here. Yeah, that's right. So, here we've got PlayStation 4 Pro versus Xbox One X with the action mode. Okay, so let's just talk about that for a second. There are two modes in this game, action mode and movie mode, right? Right, yeah. And the action mode prioritises the frame rate and the movie mode kind of focuses more on resolution. Okay, and obviously what we're seeing here is a game that is desperately struggling to maintain 30 frames per second. Constant tearing on both PS4 Pro and Xbox One X. Difficult to pick a winner here, but what are the differences here? Really, the, the differences between the two versions with this mode comes down to mainly image quality and sort of certain effects. So, resolution-wise, on action mode on Pro, it's 1080p, whereas on Xbox One X, it's 1440p. And there's a few things that are dialed back slightly on Xbox One X, such as the foliage density and draw distance, which aren't quite on par with what we get on the Pro. Okay, so that's a straight 77% resolution increase on the X with a kind of, well, performance kind of looks like for like really. Yeah, uh, neither one's that great to be honest, but this is, in terms of the best way to play the game on each platform, this is the best results you're going to see, so the performance doesn't really improve with the other settings you can choose, it only sort of gets worse from here on out. Okay, so what we are looking at is an unlocked frame rate with VSync off essentially, which means constant tearing and a wildly fluctuating frame rate which can be, I don't know, low 20s up to the 40s by the look of it. Yeah, that's right. And one other thing I did notice is that at points the controller response actually appears smoother on PlayStation 4 Pro, whereas on Xbox One X there tends to be sort of heavier frame rate drops. So even though there's no VSync, if you look at the frame time graph, there's more stutters there on the One X compared to the Pro, which uh, I guess when the frame rates are in the 20s, it doesn't make too much difference. But it just means that if you want a slightly better gameplay experience, I guess Pro can deliver it, even when it's not optimal on either. Okay, so let's talk about the action mode and the movie mode on PlayStation 4 Pro. So action mode, native 1080p resolution. The movie mode's kind of interesting because according to the developer, they're using the geometry rendering technique. So they're starting off with a 1080p frame buffer and then using a kind of geometry upscale in order to reach 2160p. But when looking at it closely, the results here are kind of strange. If you remember Gravity Rush that used a similar technique, when you pixel counted it, it resolved native 4K 2160p just with blurrier sort of textures and upscaled foliage. But in this particular game when I pixel counted the movie mode it actually came out at 1080p but without the usual upscaling artifacts. It looks sharp but almost like a, a nearest neighbour scale on the geometry. Right, okay, so it doesn't resolve a native 4K pixel count but there is definitely an image quality improvement. Yep, it looks a lot sharper, but you're not getting the, a boost to 2160p as such. Okay, fair enough. But what are the implications here on performance? So if we move on to the actual frame rate, there's a huge difference. So action mode can go above 30 frames per second, up to sort of 40 FPS at points, but generally it spends most of its time, you know, between sort of 25, 30 FPS. Movie mode, though, you get a massive downgrade. It's almost around sort of 20 FPS, most of the time dipping below in sort of more demanding moments. And you also get a huge amount of screen tearing as well, so not great on that front. 
Yeah, I don't really quite understand the name movie mode on this one. I mean, movies run at 24 frames per second, not 18, 17. And, uh, you know, when I go to the multiplex, I don't generally tend to see tearing in my cinematic presentation. So this is kind of like a bit of a puzzle. I don't quite understand. Essentially, it is a resolution bump only. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you're getting better image clarity, that's for sure, but honestly, I don't see who would want to take the hit in performance. As you can see, it's just a real stuttery mess in movie mode, and it's not really any fun to play at all, you know, and action mode isn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination, so yeah, kind of an odd choice with movie mode. I'm not sure who would really take that benefit in uh, image quality for the, the terrible performance you're getting. Yeah, it looks like a good 30 to 40% bump to performance by using the action mode. And, you know, essentially, when you're sub 20 FPS, then you're kind of veering into unplayable territory. Yeah, that's right. So uh, not one to choose, especially when, uh, in terms of settings outside of resolution, uh, the two are basically identical between the, the modes there. OK, so there's no actual additional detail going into movie mode. It is just a resolution bump. Yeah, that's right. Okie doke. Well, let's move on to the next permutation then, which is what? So next up, we've got Xbox One X. And, well, in terms of resolution, action mode and movie mode, I counted a straight 1440p on both. Uh, so no difference there. And likewise, the, the visual quality in terms of the effects work and stuff look to be the same between both versions. Just things like dynamic time of day and uh, lighting. Uh, causing some of the, the variances you might see in the shots. Okay, so no actual difference in pixel count, a visual feature set, it is identical between the two modes, which begs the question, why have two modes? Right, it does seem a bit unusual. What I understand is the idea behind having the two modes is you can select one that improves performance. On the other formats, obviously resolution gets lowered, but on Xbox One X, uh, they've just decided to enable VSync for movie mode. And yeah, performance also appears to be uh, slightly worse as well, so I'm not sure what the benefits are. You've got identical image quality but with no tearing, and you're not really getting uh, that much difference in terms of the actual gameplay experience, I guess. Well, you're going to be getting, uh, in theory at least, uh, better fluidity on the action mode because it can render a new frame whenever one is ready, whereas on the movie mode it's waiting for the next refresh. Okay, so essentially then the difference is V-Sync on and off and that can have various impacts on the timing of when frames are rendered. But I guess you've got a choice between bad judder and consistent, ever-present screen tear. Okay, so with that in mind, bearing in mind that we're getting some pretty poor results on the enhanced consoles, 6 teraflops, 4.2 teraflops, the question has got to be at this point, what happens on the base console? So we're going to kick off here with PlayStation 4, right? Yep, so this is PlayStation 4, and so long as you've updated to the latest patch, you get a choice of action and movie mode as well. Action mode is 900p, movie mode is 1080p, and in terms of visual settings, like we've seen on the other platforms, uh, they're identical between the two modes outside of the resolution. And uh, speaking of the actual visual effects, I noticed that things like shadow quality and anisotropic filtering is actually very similar to the PS4 Pro release. It's really just like foliage density and environment detail that gets paired back for the, uh, the base version. Okay, fair enough. And I guess, you know, girding my loins here, but what is the performance profile of the base PlayStation 4? Right, well, in action mode, it's uh, not too dissimilar to what we've seen on Xbox One X and uh, PS4 Pro. So lots of screen tearing and, you know, it goes up to 30 frames per second on the base hardware. I haven't really noticed it going above by, you know, that much more, maybe one or two FPS. But again, it's it's suboptimal, but it's not as terrible as you might expect for base hardware, given that the uh, they've paired back a lot of the environment detail in terms of the foliage in order to get it running at this kind of state. But movie mode is... Uh, it's a bit of a disaster, really. I mean, it's like sub-20 FPS at points, and yeah, it's really not great. But they do have V-Sync engaged on the movie mode, which they don't have on the Pro's movie mode. Yeah, it's kind of an unusual uh, thing to see. You would have thought it would be the same as on PS4 Pro, but instead it, you're getting a presentation that's more like on the Xbox One uh, X version. So you don't get screen tearing, but you get a massive hit into performance with more unevenness in terms of controller response, things like that. Yeah, 20 FPS or under, I mean, again, I think we're veering into unplayable territory here. 
Yeah, I certainly didn't enjoy playing it like this. The action mode was a lot more fluid compared to the movie mode, so that's the one I'd definitely choose. Yeah, I mean, fair enough. I mean, it does seem that action mode across the board seems to be the way forward here, doesn't it? But we have one more console to look at, base Xbox One. What's the story? Right, base Xbox One, there are no modes to select, so you basically just accept what you're given here. Uh, that means we're looking at a 720p resolution and with various effects being paired back from base PS4 so a lot lower shadow resolution, dialed back and isotropic filtering and there also appears to be sort of uh, a removal of ambient occlusion in some scenes along with depth of field so a general pairing back in settings along with a reduction in resolution. There. Okay then so on the base hardware then we've dropped from 900p to 720p uh, there have been a raft of graphical compromises implemented and performance looks pretty poor as well. Yeah, so here we've got PS4 in action mode which is the 900p mode versus just what you get on base Xbox One and yeah it's really struggling to get to 30 frames per second on Xbox One it very rarely manages to do that, it spends a lot of time in the low 20s uh, and obviously this V-Sync's not enabled so there's a ton of screen tearing so even with that massive drop in resolution to 720p it's still not optimal and that's with paired back visual settings not really very good at all. Yeah it does seem to be a bit of a Hobson's choice with this one I can't see any decent way to play the game at all across any of the systems and it's kind of surprising that the PS4 Pro version at 1080p still seems to be running really badly on the action mode which you know based on what we've seen so far you, you know you kind of think that would be the optimal way to play. I kind of feel that you know maybe when they're developing the game with the mid-gen refresh consoles the Pro and Xbox One X perhaps they shouldn't have dialed up some of the settings like the foliage quality and draw distance as much as they have. It looks a lot better as a result but at the same time it seems that performance is really being impacted with that increase in visual effects along with resolution which uh, maybe wasn't the best choice I think in a game like this you'd much rather have a more stable frame rate so you can get consistent controls and a, a more enjoyable sort of gameplay experience rather than more eye candy. Mm, meanwhile Xbox One X everything at 1440p so it is a four times resolution uplift over the base console but at the same time well I don't think when we went to buy our enhanced consoles we really were looking for a sub 30 FPS action, so it's a bit of a disappointment all round, I think. Yeah, agreed. It's definitely disappointing to see, especially considering the developers are using a new engine that is supposed to be built from the ground up around these current gen consoles, but yeah, based on the results, we're just not seeing the kind of improvement we'd hoped for. You know, at least a solid 30 FPS would be nice, but yeah, there it is. Not exactly the return to form we wanted to see, and a disappointing experience all round across all the consoles. Okay, so I think we're going to leave it there. From what I can tell, there's no optimal route forward for playing this game smoothly on any of the consoles, base or enhanced, and that kind of leaves the PC as the only remaining vector towards a smooth experience on this title, which, you know, going in here, I kind of didn't expect that. But, well, that's what it is. So, thanks for that, Dave. No worries, Rich. And, yeah, please do like and subscribe to support what we do here at Digital Foundry, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Take the attack to the enemy. Oh!